China's manufacturing PMI accelerated contraction in November and fell to 49.4. Foreign investors discouraged, Chinese economy has never been as dangerous as today. Unemployment surges in China, experts lament, the situation is very bad. UK brand regatta jackets discovered with prison labor certificates, sparking controversy over prison labor. It's all covered in today's China Truths. China's manufacturing PMI accelerated contraction in November and fell to 49.4. In November, China's manufacturing sector saw an increased contraction, indicating that existing policy support measures are insufficient to revive the country's factories amid sluggish domestic and foreign demand. Data released by the Bureau of Statistics of the Communist Party of China on November 30 revealed that the official Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index (PMI) for November was 49.4. A 0.1 decrease from the previous month and below the crucial 50-point threshold that signifies expansion or contraction. Analysts, surveyed by Reuters, had anticipated a value of 49.7, with only Goldman Sachs and Standard Chartered accurately predicting the lower index. The new orders index contracted for the second consecutive month, and the new export orders subindex lingered at 46.3, marking the eighth consecutive month of contraction. Show How, an economist at Guotai Junan International Holdings, noted, today's PMI data will further raise expectations for policy support, emphasizing that fiscal policy will likely take center stage in the coming year. Furthermore, China's non-manufacturing PMI unexpectedly dropped to 50.2 in November from the previous 50.6, signaling a slowdown in the vast service and construction industries. China's economy faces several challenges including a spreading real estate crisis, local government debt risks, slowing global economic growth, and geopolitical tensions. Despite Beijing's introduction of various policies, they have yielded limited success. The manufacturing PMI has contracted in seven of the past eight months, reaching 50.2 only in September. Analysts caution that unless corrective actions are taken, China could experience prolonged economic stagnation similar to Japan's by the late 2020s. To meet the annual economic growth target of around 5% next year, policymakers may need to implement additional stimulus measures, although doubts persist about sustaining growth momentum in 2023. The People's Bank of China has refrained from further monetary stimulus to prevent yuan depreciation and capital outflows. The real estate industry remains a significant drag on economic growth, with declining home sales affecting demand for furnishings and appliances. The services sector's rebound has weakened, and a sluggish job market has made consumers cautious about increasing spending. Foreign investors discouraged, Chinese economy has never been as dangerous as today. The Wall Street Journal reported on December 1 that in the past 10 years, global investors flocked to China during its economic boom. Geopolitical risks did not pose much of a threat in the past, but it is now the first factor that investors consider, which prevents many people from investing in China. Recently, the Chinese government has targeted a number of foreign consulting and due diligence firms that are critical to helping potential investors in foreign companies understand risks and other corporate and policy factors in order to make investment decisions. Relevant departments of Beijing have previously raided the Chinese offices of many American companies, including Mintz Group and Bain and & Company, and detained some local employees. International venture capital and private equity investors also have to be extra careful when evaluating Chinese companies. At the AVCJ Private Equity and Venture Capital Forum held in November, Alvin Lam, Hong Kong-based operating partner of European private equity investment firm CVC Capital Partners, said, we now have to consider geopolitical risks and regulatory risks for every deal, even before we begin to properly evaluate the attractiveness of the business and business model. David Vaughn, Chief Investment Officer for Non-U.S. and Global Strategies at San Diego-based Clarivest Asset Management, said he expects international investors to further reduce their holdings of Chinese securities if geopolitical tensions do not improve. Recently, foreign funds have withdrawn from mainland China's stock market. 
Since August this year, international investors have withdrawn funds equivalent to more than 24 billion US dollars from China's A share market through the interconnection mechanism with Hong Kong. A shares refer to stocks listed in Shanghai or Shenzhen. Data from Wind Information shows that this is the largest and longest lasting capital outflow that has occurred through this interconnection mechanism since its establishment in 2014. The outflows coincided with a wave of weak Chinese economic data. The MSCI China index has fallen 10% this year and may post annual declines for the third consecutive year. Market strategists at some major Wall Street banks say most hedge funds and active fund managers who have sold off Chinese stocks are unlikely to return to Chinese stocks until China's economic growth prospects and U.S.-China relations improve significantly. Strategists at Morgan Stanley have warned investors of the potential for continued geopolitical complexity in 2024, an election year in the United States and Taiwan. Goldman Sachs said in a report on November 12 that investors could sell off another $170 billion in Chinese stocks under what it called a very severe scenario. In this case, the U.S. pension fund could completely liquidate the Chinese stocks it holds due to policy and geopolitical reasons. Moreover, allocations for Chinese stocks by active mutual funds and hedge funds could fall to their lowest levels as their holdings in Chinese stocks were liquidated. Unemployment surges in China, experts lament, the situation is very bad. Foreign companies have withdrawn and private companies have lost confidence, leading to the collapse of Chinese companies and a wave of layoffs. On social media, some Chinese netizens revealed that the real unemployment rate in the country is very scary. The well-known job search platform MyMyApp is full of unemployment information. Screenshots show that ByteDance has aggressively laid off employees, and Pingin is also laying off employees. Some people were laid off twice a year, someone said that they have been working for 10 years and have never been so helpless. In the past, they could have jobs within two months at most after resigning. Now it is lucky to find a job within half a year. Some people say that there are whales of layoffs everywhere, and several friends have already started to pack up and go home to celebrate the new year. Two days ago, there was news on Weibo that Zhengzhou Xingwei Group, ranked 124th among the world's top 500 companies, emptied out its buildings overnight. All its equipment and offices were vacated, and employee salaries were not paid. The Bowie Shoe Factory in Yangzhou, Jiangsu Province, which has been in operation for 17 years, is preparing to close down before the end of the year and move the factory to Indonesia. Workers went on strike on November 30 to protest over compensation issues. The economy deteriorated, and Shangxi province took the lead in setting records. Lao Man, a financial self-media person, said in the latest program that according to official statistics, in the first three quarters of this year, the income and expenditure balance of residents in Shangxi province fell compared with last year. In the first three quarters of this year, it was 7,984 yuan, a decrease of 4.6% compared with last year's 8,369 yuan. Lao Man said that this is the first time that the provincial level residents' balance of payments has declined since statistics were collected across China, and the decline is not low. The balance of residents' income and expenditure is the remainder after per capita disposable income minus consumer expenditures necessary for survival. Lao Man said that this is a very important concept. The money that residents spend on buying houses, traveling, and making luxury purchases all comes from the balance of payments. Shangxi's balance of payments will bring a huge and irresistible impact to Shangxi's economy. Lao Man listed the impacts on Shangxi's economy, ranging from the fall in fixed asset investment to the tragic shrinkage in consumption. He finally concluded that Shangxi's economy collapsed faster than other provinces, and it set a historic record, starting from the income side of residents. It is worth paying attention to how quickly this tragic situation will spread across the country. The Wall Street Journal published an article on November 30 stating that China's economic weakness and policies make foreigners feel unsafe, leading to the continuous relocation of foreign companies in China. How bad is the situation of foreign capital flowing out of China? The Wall Street Journal asked and answered its own question, saying, simply put, it's terrible. The report then quoted data from the China's administration of foreign exchange as saying that foreign direct investment in the third quarter was negative 11.8 billion US dollars, which is the first time China has recorded a negative value.
the report directly stated that this was so bad that even pessimists would be shocked. Not only are foreign investors fleeing, but the number of international students and tourists going to China is also decreasing. The Wall Street Journal said that according to data from the U.S. Embassy in China, more than 11,000 Americans studied in China in 2019, and the number of Americans studying in China this year has dropped to a mere 350. The Wall Street Journal believes that in the face of this situation, Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping has begun to worry. He promised at the recent APEC summit in San Francisco that China will fully guarantee national treatment for foreign invested enterprises. But experts believe the statement is not enough to have a substantial impact. UK brand regatta jackets discovered with prison labor certificates, sparking controversy over prison labor. A consumer in England bought a regatta jacket, a British brand, and unexpectedly discovered a Chinese prisoner identification card in the lining, sparking concerns about the involvement of prison labor. The incident, covered by The Guardian on December 1, detailed how a woman from Derbyshire acquired the waterproof women's jacket during a Black Friday online promotion. Upon receiving the garment, she sensed a rectangular object in the right sleeve, impeding her elbow movement. The woman cut open the sleeve to extract the object and was astonished to find what seemed to be a prisoner identification card. The card included a name, number, and details about the detainee, all written in simplified Chinese characters. The photo on the card depicted a man in what appeared to be a prison uniform, with a height measurement scale in the background. The card was enclosed in a plastic case, stamped with made by the Prison Management Bureau of the Ministry of Justice. The unnamed woman told The Guardian, you wouldn't expect it, the jacket, to be from Regatta. It's a British brand, on par with Next and MNS. You put your children in their clothes, and something like this happens, it just makes you feel very uneasy and uncomfortable. Upon contacting Regatta's customer service and providing evidence of the suspicious card, the woman received a surprising response acknowledging that it resembled a prisoner's ID but claiming it was a Chinese work permit from their factory in China. The representative advised her to dispose of the document, which she reluctantly did. However, later that evening, Regatta emailed her, requesting the return of the card and the jacket. Subsequently, several regatta representatives had a phone call with the woman, encouraging her to return the document and offering to replace the original jacket, which had a hole in the sleeve, along with an additional one as a goodwill gesture. She declined the offer but retrieved the discarded card from the trash. In response to inquiries from the Epoch Times, regatta refuted claims of incorporating forced prisoner labor in their products. They also rejected the suggestion of exchanging new clothing for the recovered card, emphasizing the importance of returning the card to aid in their ongoing investigation. The company additionally noted that the investigation uncovered credible evidence suggesting this was an isolated incident. Individuals involved in the incident had a history of being in prison before being employed by that factory, and there were no indications during the investigation that the factory employed prison labor. Regatta clarified that. Based on the limited pictures shared by the customer, the document's date was identified as 2022. Payroll records maintained by Regatta indicated that the individual featured in the document was an employee receiving wages. This person had a valid employment contract with the factory, working under regular conditions and not enforced or prison conditions. The employee worked at the factory from March to June 2023 during which the implicated clothing was produced and shipped from the factory in July 2023, one month after the employee's employment concluded. Regatta affirmed that the company continues its investigation into how the document was sewn into the garment. According to Regatta's 2023 statement on modern slavery policy, the supply chain prohibits forced or prison labor, and the company is a member of the Ethical Trading Initiative. The organization mandates adherence to certain guidelines, including the prohibition of forced or involuntary prison labor. The statement also mentions that 70 factories underwent audits between 2022 and 2023, but it remains unclear how many of them are located in China. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.